This is tough. Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and I've been using these two for the better part of a month now. We've got the new Galaxy S22 Ultra and the Oppo Find X5 Pro. But which is best and which one should you actually buy? The problem is Samsung usually overshadows the competition, including Oppo. It's all Samsung versus Apple or Samsung versus last year's Samsung. But once again, Oppo is coming back fighting with some impressive camera hardware, an absolutely gorgeous design, and in some ways, we're actually getting better specs with this. So let's get the hefty spec list out of the way first. This does not tell you the full story, but you can get an idea of how these two stack up. Of course, being flagship Android phones, they have a lot in common, but there's also a few notable differences between them, particularly in the camera department. The first thing you will notice though, is if you buy the Oppo, then you get a charger in the box, which of course is a very fast 80 watt SuperVOOC charger. Whereas with the S22, while it does now support faster 45 watt charging, admittedly older phones also did that, but this actually is better optimized for it. You don't get that in the box. You'll have to pay an extra 45 pounds if you want that new feature. Don't get me wrong. I do appreciate Samsung trying to reduce packaging and you know save the world a little bit, but not perhaps at the cost of the consumer. Maybe give us a choice when we buy the phone. But the second thing you will notice is, well, this, the vastly different design. It's actually quite refreshing how different these are. And with the S22 Ultra, which is in all but name the Note 22 Ultra, we have that unique Note style with its squared off corners, the huge screen, and of course, the S Pen. But for me, the X5 Pro is more comfortable and feels a bit more compact as you hold it. I mean, the screen is 0.1 inch smaller, but it's mainly thanks to these rounded corners. So Oppo have actually gone with a ceramic material for the back of the body here, uh, compared to glass on last year's X3 Pro. Both very nice. This feels more like a metal. This feels more like a plastic, if I'm honest. Both look good in their own way. This is now uh, quite glossy and it also comes in black or white and they both have quite a unique look. Oppo says the ceramic is more scratch resistant and also better at dissipating heat than glass, which maybe it does, but I did still find this gets quite toasty after you've been gaming for half an hour. I also know this isn't everyone's cup of tea, but for me, I really like this smooth, almost melted look to the camera module. And again, compared to last year's X3 Pro, we now have this curvy, smoother 75 degree angle at the lower right on the camera module, with the idea being when you're holding a phone like this, there's a bit more room for your index finger without it going over the camera module. And also there's another advantage to it. Let's put them both on the table, slam them down like so. This is what happens when I press the Oppo, nothing really. And then the S22 Ultra. Because we've got these five sticky outy lenses on the back of the S22 Ultra, and we haven't got that camera housing, which we had on the S21 Ultra, here they are side by side. If I bring it up to the light, you can see the difference. It means on a table, it makes a turn noise and it's a bit wobbly. I'm also a little bit worried that the lenses on the S22 will be the first thing to get damaged. Oppo actually have a recessed crater design for their camera lenses to keep them out of harm's way. Now this is kind of ironic because the S22 Ultra is actually the first phone to come with the latest Gorilla Glass Victus Plus protection on both the front and the back, which is great compared to just regular Gorilla Glass Victus on the front here and the ceramic body on the back. However, I've been using this for a couple of weeks and I've scratched it. Unfortunately, this beautiful phantom black has picked up some scratches, which is a real shame. I can't seem to get them out. It's not just me being a complete idiot though, although it normally is, uh, but my friend Daniel over at Zone of Tech uh, shared a photo on Twitter about his massively scratched up S22. It's probably a camera lens scratching it or the uh, sort of something on my jeans doing it, but I'll be honest with you, as someone who's used the S21 Ultra and also the Note 20 Ultra, I didn't experience it at all. There isn't a single scratch on this, even in the same phantom black color. So I definitely recommend a case. On the bright side, neither phone pick up smudges or fingerprints, which is good. And also the Samsung does come with more color options and perhaps actually this wouldn't show up scratches as much. I think if I were to buy another one of these, I would go with the burgundy. Of course, design is very subjective. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder and all that. Uh, and while technically very impressive, the fact that Samsung has managed to squeeze an S Pen into the chassis along with a 5,000 million power battery, I think for me, the more unique, more comfortable, and also just, I think, smarter design of the Oppo earns a point.
Oh, hi. Just a quick mention of today's lovely sponsor, Surfshark VPN. And I thought I'd record the whole thing on the Oppo. But let me show you something cool and let me show you why I use Surfshark. I actually do. So firstly, there is an app for literally everything. This is from the Mac App Store. You could also get a Chrome extension. It's on your phone, whatever you like. Anyway, I've now logged into the uh, US Boston server, but this is my UK Netflix page. And look at that, we went from top UK to top US. So this is one of the reasons why I actually use a VPN. It's also really important for your privacy as it helps to prevent tracking and malware and ads and all those horrible things from following you. And also if you're using you know, your laptop or your computer for online banking or emails or you know my business is YouTube if someone hacks in and changes the password I'm a bit screwed so I'm obviously very uh, aware of security although one of the coolest things is you can use just one account with an unlimited number of devices which is great if you've got a family or a million phones and laptops like I do click the link below or use the code techchap to get 83% off and three months extra for free plus if you're not super happy there is a 30-day money-back guarantee check it out by clicking the link in the description. Now these are both big phones, although the S22 is a touch bigger at 6.8 inches versus 6.7, but they do share the same resolution up to WQHD+, as well as the same 1 to 120Hz refresh rate using an LTPO panel. They also both support HDR10+, and of course they're both AMOLED. However, as you may be able to see, the S22 does come out on top here with a significantly brighter screen peaking at a whopping 1700 nits versus 1300 on the Oppo. Plus the new extra brightness boost option on the S22 bumps the brightness by around 200 nits in any situation. And it really does make a difference. The Oppo does have a bit of a secret weapon. Firstly, we have 8192 levels of brightness with most of them at the lower end. So you can really finely tune just how dim or well bright you want it. And also uniquely to this, Oppo have actually calibrated the colors, the color accuracy of the screen at both 500 nits and 100 nits. Whereas pretty much all flagship phones are just calibrated at 500, which means if you are using this at night, you're browsing a bit of Reddit in bed, which I do most nights, and you have the screen dimmed, the colors are gonna be more accurate. Okay, next question, which is faster? Well, this is actually a bit tricky because as you guys know, there are two versions of the S22, the Exynos and the Snapdragon. And being here in good old rainy England, I have Samsung's own Exynos 2200 chip. But putting that just to one side for a second, here are the results between the two phones. And in Antutu, the Exynos S22 is a good 10% faster. And also if we look at the temperatures, it's actually three degrees cooler during the test than the Oppo. The Exynos S22 also wins in Geekbench. It's 22 and 10% faster in single and multi-core respectively. But then the Oppo fights back in the 3D Mark graphics test, where it's a solid 16% faster throughout. Although, as you can see from the stability score and the graph, the S22 is more stable. It doesn't throttle as harshly and it's got a much smoother curve to it, which is what you want to see. Ideally, I'd test this with the Snapdragon variant of the S22, but I don't have that yet, unfortunately. But the thing is, while benchmarks are kind of interesting, they're not really reflective of real world use. And actually currently, some games on the Exynos S22 just aren't optimized. Games like Call of Duty, PUBG, or even Bright Ridge, either missing graphics options or it's not performing like it should be. Best case scenario, they're pretty much on par. Worst case, the Exynos hasn't been properly optimized, although hopefully that will get better with time. But having said all that, it's a bit of a moot point if you're not in an Exynos region. If you live in North America, for example, and you get the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, then, well, that's not very helpful. Although stay tuned and make sure you have subscribed as I will be doing a big Qualcomm versus Exynos S22 video very soon. I'll tell you what's more important though. The Oppo comes with a better spec and it's cheaper. This in the UK will cost you 1,050 pounds. And for that, you get 12 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. Very nice. However, the S22 here in the UK costs 1150 pounds, so a full 100 quid more, and yet we only get eight gigs of RAM and 128 storage. Half the storage and four gigs less RAM. Fewer RAM, less RAM. For an ultra flagship phone that costs that much, it's a bit cheap, I have to say. It's a little bit frustrating, actually. So broadly, in terms of value for money and the, well, like for like specs that we're getting, in terms of the entry level model, at least, the Oppo, that's definitely a point there. However, there are advantages to the S22. Neither phone supports micro SD cards, so you can't expand the storage. However, you can get this with up to a terabyte of storage, 128, 256, 512, 
or a terabyte. Plus then when you do go for the higher spec, you also get 12 gigs of RAM to match that. And actually both phones offer these sort of RAM plus or RAM boost options. Uh, so you can use a bit of the storage to speed up the phone. So it comes down to if you want more storage, then, well, yeah, you have more options on the S22. But if you're just going to buy the cheapest one of these and you want the best bang for buck, probably the Oppo. Having said that, these are two of the fastest phones you can buy. And so while on paper that sounds like a big difference, I don't know if I'd really base your whole buying decision around that. And also, I'm happy to say, you also won't need to choose based on battery life. Somehow, both phones are squeezed in a 5,000 mAh battery. So I've been using these pretty much every day for the past almost a month actually, and I didn't know what to expect when it comes to battery life. And also of course, with Android phones in particular, battery life does tend to improve over time as you use it, and it sort of learns your patterns and knows how to optimize the battery. What I didn't expect uh, was for the battery to be identical. For example, after an hour of general use, bit of gaming, YouTube calls, etc., both phones still had 85% left. And then by 11 p.m., no word of a lie, both phones were on 38%. So both very impressive and will easily get you a full day and with a bit of rationing, probably a day and a half. But neither can quite beat the king of battery, the iPhone 13 Pro Max. So with a pretty equal battery between them, the point goes to Oppo, as while Samsung has increased the fast charging to 45 watts, the X5 Pro not only supports faster 80 watt SuperVOOC charging with the charger in the box, but we also get faster 50 watt AirVOOC charging, although you will need to invest in one of Oppo's own wireless stands for that. Both phones can top up other devices though with reverse wireless charging. Okay, I've made you guys wait long enough. Let's talk about the big one, cameras. Which has the best camera? Well, I can tell you straight away that this has been incredibly tough. I've been going back and forth on the photos and the videos I've taken on these in Barcelona, in London, where I live here in Somerset, in the middle of nowhere, uh, over the last few days, and it has been so difficult to decide which one comes out on top. I do have a favorite, which I'll come to in a second, but there are pros and cons for each. And also what's made it trickier is that neither of them are completely consistent either. But before I tell you which one I think is best, let me show you my working. And first things first, the Samsung has four lenses to the Oppo's three with that extra 10 times telephoto on the S22. And even if it's not something you use all the time, there's no doubt the S22 Ultra is more versatile. It's the king of zoom. And even up to 30 times, it's pretty usable. But then, in favor of the X5 Pro, the ultra-wide camera shares almost exactly the same specs as the main camera, so we're getting one of the highest quality ultra-wides on a phone. However, one downside is the stabilization when switching to ultra-wide, as it seems to just go out of the window for the Oppo, unlike the Samsung. Now both phones can shoot macro photos using the ultra-wide lens, but sadly Oppo have actually dropped one of my favorite features from the X3 Pro, that microscope lens. It was a cool, unique extra. Both phones have also upgraded the glass on their main lens to improve the quality, although again, that's a little bit tricky to actually quantify what difference that makes. What is obvious though, is that both phones offer a significant upgrade over their predecessors, even just from a year ago. And that's despite, on paper at least, giving us similar hardware. In my Oppo unboxing and hands-on video, I put it side by side with the X3 Pro, and both the main and also the selfie cameras showed significant improvement in detail and colors. And it was a similar story with the S22 versus the S21. I was kind of shocked just how much more detail we're getting, and particularly in low-light selfies, it's a world of difference. So far so good then, but actually putting these two side by side, well, there's a lot to talk about, but I've kind of boiled it down to a few key takeaways. Number one, they are both excellent, and in some situations you can barely tell them apart. Number two, the S22 gives us a more contrasty and often more detailed shot, whereas the Oppo can be brighter and a little flatter in terms of contrast and softer shadows, and also usually a bit more vivid and perhaps a touch oversaturated sometimes. Number three, and I do prefer Samsung's portrait shots. The edge detection is insanely good. I mean, it can even separate individual hairs. Even if it's not flawless, I just found that Samsung took a noticeably better portrait photo. Number four, and both phones can be a bit hit or miss when it comes to white balance. Let me show you what I mean. And here in the bar, two schmucks in Barcelona, if you were wondering, the Oppo is bathed in yellow, with the S22 giving us more nuanced colors. But then, bizarrely, back at my studio, it was the reverse, with the Oppo impressively maintaining the more true-to-life color. 
But for number five, hands down, the Samsung selfie camera is better. It's more detailed, it doesn't get blown out by strong backlight. It's not to say the Oppo is bad, it's just not as good as the Samsung. So if a selfie camera is important to you, then, well, that's maybe a deciding factor. Number six, and when it comes to video, boy, this is a tough one. Walking around in good light, shooting 4K, there's really not much in it. The Oppo is a touch brighter and gives us softer shadows, but largely they're both very good. Of course, we do have the benefit of the extra zoom on the S22 Ultra, and also as I say, the Oppo falls down a bit when it comes to the stabilization using that ultra wide lens. Going back to the bar, and this is a really good example of showing off that wider field of view that we get on the Samsung, which is nice to have, there's just more in the frame. Although I think I do slightly prefer the Oppo's video, with more natural skin tones, there's a bit more detail in the darker areas compared to the Samsung. But then, in extreme low light, I basically turned off all the lights in my studio except for the PC and laptop, and well, they're both pretty terrible. The Oppo can be brighter, so we do see a bit more, but that is at the cost of more noise. And despite the X5 Pro's very fancy new 5-axis DSLR level stabilization, the S22 is smoother. So I'm actually working on the edit for this video as we speak. Uh, I'm shooting this, this on the Oppo uh, in 4K with the red camera. I'm actually gonna switch to the S22 in a second and you hopefully then can hear the difference in the microphone because uh, that's important to some people as well. But this is such a tricky comparison. I see a couple of photos from the Samsung and I think, okay, that's, you know, that's superior white balance, more realistic, more detail. Then I do, say, a shot like this side by side. I think, oh, actually, hang on a minute, the Oppo is better. But let's now switch to the S22. Oh, boom, look at that. Crazy magical editing right there. But what do you think of the video quality, the field of view, uh, and also the audio, the mic? Because when I did my iPhone versus S22 video, my camera comparison, I did find that the S22 was much better at sort of cutting out background noise, although there isn't really much going on in my studio here. Uh, and it just came out with a sort of clearer audio. So kind of interested to hear what you think in terms of the Samsung versus the Oppo. This is definitely a tricky comparison. I really like both of them. And finally for the camera, they both have a few tricks up their sleeve. For example, the S22 can shoot in 8K with a rear camera and also 4K with a front versus just 4K and still only 1080p on the Oppo. We also get single take, director's mode and portrait video, all nice to have even if not maybe essential. Whereas on the Oppo, we have this kind of nostalgic expand mode, which gives you a super wide aspect ratio. We do also get this cinematic mode that lets you shoot in log and HDR and tinker with other settings. Although frustratingly, this is only in a cinematic 235 by one aspect ratio. You can't just shoot in regular 16 by nine. Our post partnership with Hasselblad also gives us a few nice extras, including their natural color calibration, although this is limited to the pro camera mode where you can tinker with all the settings. And there's also a few photography style filters. And of course, one of the highlights of the Oppo, or at least according to Oppo, is their own Mari Silicon X MPU, a dedicated chip, a bit of hardware, that mainly boosts the AI and AI noise reduction to improve video. Certainly video, particularly low light video, is a step up from last year's X3 Pro, but to my eye at least, it doesn't seem to be any sort of revolutionary upgrade compared to the competition. But I do have a favorite, and I think the overall best all-round camera package is on the S22 Ultra, just. You know what we've barely even talked about? This, the S Pen. Both these phones have certain unique features, but the S Pen truly makes this stand out. You may not even use it, but having it there for doodling, drawing, e-signatures, it just gives you a lot more versatility and something that no other flagship phone offers. The S22 also gives us DeX, if you want to use your phone more like a laptop or a workstation. There's also slightly better connectivity with a UWB chip, and also Wi-Fi 6E support, which bizarrely, we don't get on the Oppo, that's only Wi-Fi 6. In terms of software, both phones ship running Android 12 with One UI and Color OS on the Samsung and Oppo respectively. Generally, I do prefer Samsung software, but there's really not that much in it and it's very much a personal preference. Although Samsung do promise a whopping four years of Android software updates on the S22, although I can't guarantee how quick that will be, versus three years on the Oppo, but that is still very good. And breathe. That was a lot to take in. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And actually, if you did, a little subscribe would be very much appreciated. But which one is best? Which one would I go for? 
Honestly, you can't go wrong with either of these, but there is nothing worse than sitting on the fence because that's how you get splinters in your ass. I think as much as I do appreciate the better spec on this in the base model and also it's a little bit cheaper, if you want the best all singing, all dancing flagship Android phone, you really do have to go with the S22 Ultra. But what do you reckon? Would you go with the Oppo, the Samsung, or, well, none of the above? Maybe an iPhone or a Xiaomi 12 Pro or something, or a OnePlus 10 Pro? Let me know your favorite phone and also which you think came out on top in this comparison in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat. Oh, and don't forget to give Surfshark VPN a try. Click the link below or use the code TechChap to get 83% off and three months extra for free.